The Wood Whisperer is brought to you by Powermatic, the gold standard since 1921. And by Rockler Woodworking and Hardware, create with confidence. On today's show, we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to show you how to make a vampire steak. Now, if you do make one of these, you got to promise me that the first vampires you go after are those goofy teeny bopper glittery ones that no one really likes anyway. We don't need them. Now some might argue that the weirdest part of this project is the fact that I'm actually using my lathe. I don't think I've used my lathe on the show since probably within the first few months when I did a uh, refinishing project. So uh, I do use my lathe, but I'm more of a utilitarian turner. I turn parts for projects when I need them. Uh, so something like this was an opportunity that came along. Uh, a friend of mine, Sean, is doing a muscular dystrophy association charity and he wanted to auction off a few different things and one of those things was a vampire slaying kit. So I thought it was really cool. I'd like to of course do my part and this is what I came up with. It's made from maple. Uh, essentially it's really just a spindle. So the, the techniques that we're going to use to make this are very similar to the techniques you might use to create spindles for a regular furniture project. So I thought it would be fun to show you how it's done and we'll go through it step by step and uh, then we'll go kill some vampires. Are you ready to do some turning? I can't hear you. That's much better. Safety first, no loose fitting clothes. Okay, nobody needs to see that. Now you also want to remove all jewelry. You'll notice this is a rule that I frequently break, but that's just my personal choice. So to be on the safe side, I recommend removing everything, including those rings. Well, that is if you can get the darn thing off. Now, what are you going to do if the wood flies off the lathe? Okay, that might work, but I think you can do better. Well, that's a step in the right direction, but let's think about protecting our entire face and throat. There you go. A full face shield is recommended. Now, when holding a tool at the lathe, I like the overhand grip. Place the tool firmly on the tool rest and bring the handle down to about 45 degrees. And try to plant the handle into your hip for extra support and control. Now if you've never turned before, taking the tool to the wood for the first time can be quite intimidating. So for your first experience, I recommend rubbing the bevel. Place the bevel against the workpiece as you rotate the stock manually. Then slowly raise the handle so that the cutting edge begins to approach the wood. Eventually, you'll get to a point where the shavings begin to peel off. So it's always a good idea to approach the wood at that 45 degree angle, rub the bevel, and slowly bring up the sharp working edge. After a while, bringing the cutting edge to the work becomes second nature. Now with all that out of the way, let's turn a vampire steak. I'm using a piece of scrap maple for this project. The blank is mounted right into the chuck in the headstock. The tailstock is then brought to the work as close to the center as I can get it. Once the tailstock is locked down, I can crank the live center into the middle of the workpiece, securing it into position. I start the lathe up at a relatively slow speed for safety reasons. You never want to spin an unbalanced piece of wood too fast. Now let's make some chips fly. Meet the roughing gouge. The roughing gouge is made of thick steel with a wide tip that's great for rounding over those sharp square corners. It's the tool of choice for this rough work. My initial goal here is to simply make a cylinder. Although not intentional, the red marks on the workpiece will be a great indicator of my progress. Once the blank is nearly round, I could start to make my reference marks. The stake will be about 16 inches long, so I mark two lines 16 inches apart from one another. I use my hand for reference in deciding how long the handle portion should be. Then I just add a few decorative elements. The areas I'm filling in with the pencil here will sit proud of the surface and will help further define the handle area. Meet the diamond parting tool. 
This tool is great for making nice square cuts. I like to use it to define thickness limits. For instance, I want the handle to be about an inch and a half thick. So I use the diamond parting tool at the top and the bottom of the handle to establish two reference points where the thickness is exactly one and a half inches. And I use calipers to confirm the thickness. Now I can switch to another tool to bring the rest of the handle down to the appropriate thickness. Now this is the Ellsworth gouge. Named after renowned turner David Ellsworth, this is the most versatile turning tool that I own. The deep flute gives you a wide range of cutting approaches. From heavy stock removal, to shearing cuts, to scraping cuts. This tool seems to be able to do just about anything. But here, I'm just using it to hog away stock. Say hello to my little friend, the skew chisel. The skew chisel is perhaps the most feared lathe tool on the block. It's incredibly versatile and effective, but if you slip up, you could wind up gouging your work beyond repair. So you want to get some practice with this bad boy. Here I'm using it to bring my handle down to the final thickness while keeping things straight and flat. Now I'll be switching back and forth from one tool to another as needed, bringing the vampire stake to life. Pun intended. Please keep in mind that I am a self-confessed utilitarian turner. I turn what I need to when I need to, so there certainly may be better and more efficient methods and tools than what I've shown you here. So if you want to venture into wood turning at a deeper level, I suggest doing some research and learning from folks who live and die by the lathe. There are plenty of them out there. And now I'm just going to be quiet and let you enjoy the view. I decided to do most of the finishing right on the lathe, and I started with a coat of shellac. Now I realized after the fact that I should have released the tip from the tailstock first. Now I give the finish a light sanding, followed by a coat of polyurethane. And I applied one more coat after the first one dried. When the finish is completely dry, I use a handsaw to release the stake from the headstock. Now the top requires a little sanding, followed by a couple coats of finish before we can call the project done. A beautiful wooden stake that would look fabulous sticking out of the chest of the undead. Nothing but the classics here at the Wood Whisperer. Thanks for watching.